Hey guys, this is Coder Jeet, your best friend in programming, and today I am going to talk about the C Sharp syntax. If you are new to learning C Sharp, this tutorial will help you understand better the code that you read. So C Sharp is a C or C++ style language, and one of the prominent features of C Sharp is that it is case sensitive. So when you declare variables or when you write code, you will need to make sure that the capitalization is maintained just as is. What does it mean? In C Sharp, let's say you declare a variable called myInt where you've kept the m lowercase and i as uppercase. If you declare another variable called myInt, it's basically the same word but this time m is capital and i is lowercase then for C Sharp, this and this are entirely different entities. They are not same because C Sharp, like I said, is case sensitive. Now this syntax that we're going to talk about now is not just confined to C Sharp. I said that it was a C, C++ style syntax because these was the languages where it was first used in most popular form. A lot of people have been coding in C or C++ using the same syntax and C Sharp is kind of the next iteration of C++. So it uses the same syntax, of course, but apart from C Sharp, the syntax is also used by Java, JavaScript and PHP. And these are some of the most popular languages on the planet. So if you learn this syntax well, you can potentially find it very easy to learn and code in C, C++, Java, JavaScript or PHP. This is how a typical C Sharp file will look. But we're going to start from scratch and I'm going to show you each element in this syntax separately and explain how it works. Here is another C sharp file this time with much less code. The first line of this file is a namespace declaration. Typically every C sharp file will start with a namespace and namespaces are used to organize the code properly so that it does not mix with and conflict with the rest of the app over here. Any reasonably big C Sharp project can have dozens and even hundreds of files. And to make sure that you don't end up declaring objects that overwrite each other, you must use namespaces. Typically, the namespace will start with the solution name, like over here, followed by the project name, and then using any folder structure that you have. But this is all modifiable, and in fact, you can set it up the way you want. So you can change anything over here and that is perfectly fine. Now in most C Sharp code, the namespace declaration will be using a set of curly braces to identify where it starts and where it ends. But many times people have only one file dedicated to each namespace. And in this case, you can do away with the curly brace and just put a semicolon over here to identify that you are ending the namespace. It's a top level namespace and you can format it so the file can be slightly easier to read because you have less levels of complexity. So this is the important thing to remember is everything that follows this namespace declaration is going to belong to this namespace. Out of this file, if you want to use any public declaration from this namespace, you will need to fully qualify it. For example, if I wanted to use the class declarations outside of this file, I would need to fully qualify it. Let's say I wanted to use it in globals. So to get access to it, I would need to write do team dot server dot classes dot declarations. And this would refer to this object. Without this complete qualification of the namespace, I cannot reach the declarations class. And it says the name declarations does not exist in the current context. Now, if you want to make things easy and not have to declare the entire namespace every time you declare a variable, you can use the using keyword. The using keyword is at the top of the file before any namespace declarations to tell C Sharp what namespaces do you want to use in that file. For example, here I want to use this entire namespace, do team server classes. So I'm just going to copy it here, then using and put in the namespace name. Now I can refer to the declarations class without having to declare the entire namespace every single time because using will make it available all through the class. Now remember one thing, if your namespaces have conflicting class names, for example, let's assume that the system.txt regular expressions namespace also had a 
class called declarations and do team server classes also had a class called declarations in that case the namespaces will conflict and then you will need to identify the class with the complete namespace but that is going to be very very rare and in most cases using will help reduce a lot of unnecessary code and make your code more readable another feature of c sharp is that except for the code blocks this is a code block all lines are ended by the semicolon character so for example this was an independent line it is ended by a semicolon character and if you want to declare a variable let's say int my int you will need to terminate the declaration with the semicolon character basically every line of code will be ending with the semicolon without the semicolon the code operation is not considered complete and you can even spread out this declaration on multiple lines like I have. Now this is not really good syntax but it will compile perfectly because according to C sharp this entire text is just one simple operation or just one line of code. The next thing to remember is that code blocks are enclosed in curly braces. For example the declaration of this class is a code block and it is enclosed in curly braces. Now if you were to declare a function in it something like public void count me the body of the function will also be defined by the curly brace now if you want to declare another function void subtract me again the body of this function is enclosed in curly braces going further into this if you were to declare a for int loop for example again the body of the for loop will be in curly braces and these braces decide where the loop starts and where it ends. Now let's talk about object definition. The first thing that will follow any namespace declaration is an object definition. Now this can be a class like public class declarations that we have over here and then you can define properties, variables, functions, everything inside the class. You cannot put this outside of the class. Outside of the class this is all erroneous code and it will not compile. So you got to have a top level object. It can be a class. It can also be a struct, pretty much the same, or a record. And as you notice, you can have multiple declarations inside a single namespace. So I have declarations class. I have a struct called my struct, and I also have a record called my record and all of them are in the same namespace. Now this is not vital to put everything in one file. You can have multiple files declaring the same namespace and declaring different objects. That's perfectly viable. So a namespace can be spread over multiple files or you can have one file, one namespace and have multiple declarations in it. Next we should talk about variable declarations. We've already got a variable declared over here called my int. It's an integer data type. So a variable declaration will have the data type before it followed by the variable name that you want to assign. Now you can also declare multiple variables per line as long as they are of the same type. So you can have my int, your int, their int all on the same line. And these are all integers. If you want you can also initialize them. So I have initialized them to a certain value. Functions are also declared similarly to the variables. Here, for example, we've got an access modifier public, which means the increment function is going to be available to the people who want to call it using the declarations class. You can also have private functions, which will only be available to people who are calling the function with, within this class. So anybody outside the class, they cannot access the function. Other access modifiers are protected which is available to only the classes that inherit from this class. So if you have a function mark protected, it will only be available to the class that inherits from the declarations class. Then you've also got internal. And if you declare any function or variable as internal, it will be available to any other class inside this assembly. So inside this project, for example, outside of this project, they cannot access the variable even if they access the class or inherit from it it's not visible functions also have data types this one is set to void and if a function is set to void it means it will not return anything functions that are set to void are also called methods so a method is a function that does something but does not return anything if a function is set to a data type let's say an integer 
then it's supposed to return something and if you don't return anything of course you will get an error for example here let's just return my int after adding one to my int this is the increment operator and this function can only return integers you cannot return a string from it so when you specify the data type of a function it can only return the objects of that data type functions can also accept parameters parameters are values that you pass to the function to be processed let's create a parameter called minum it's an integer 2 and instead of adding 1 to my int let's just increment minum instead and now return the new value that we have set to minum so what this function does now is accept a parameter add one to it and then return it so what you can do now in increment 2 you can just call the function increment pass in a value let's just pass my int there and it will return the value of my int plus 1 so you can set my int to the new value so my function increment expects a parameter which I'm passing over here it's adding a number incrementing the parameter and then returning it the next thing we want to learn about is literals literals are any value in the code that represent the real world value themselves that is this number 0 is a literal so is 1 and so is 2 in this example my int is a variable and we are assigning a literal 0 to it so literals are the opposite of variables in C sharp if you declare a string literal like this it has to be enclosed in double quotes a car literal is enclosed in single quotes and a numeric literal so you have a numeric type like int does not require any quotes another important concept you need to know about is arrays arrays are collection of items and you declare them by putting square brackets as a suffix after the data type and if you want to declare the length of the array you can specify it as a parameter when you create a new instance of it next we have something called labels which are used to identify any particular location in the code you will use them pretty rarely but you can have a go-to statement leading to it let's do something over here just set my int to zero and now let's put a go to statement which will send the execution directly to my labels. Go to my labels is going to skip all this code and send the execution directly to my int equals to zero. Labels are also used in switch case operators. Switch is an operation in C sharp which lets you execute different code depending on different values. So if my int is zero, you can have certain code, for example, let's just set my string to my int is 0 and if the value is 1 then you can have my string is equal to so we are using labels here too next I want to show you anonymous types this is a way to create a new object without having to structure it or declare a class first so you can have an object called person and have a property called name and age and then you can refer to the person object and get the name and age very easily use it anywhere in the code finally i want to tell you about preprocessor directives they are identified by the character hash they're also called compiler directives sometimes and they're used to tell the compiler to execute some code if certain conditions are matched for example a common compiler directive is debug so if you do hash if debug then this code will be only executed if the software is in debug mode if the software is not in debug mode this code will not be executed you can also use elif which is else if to check if the debug mode is not set and execute a different code piece preprocessor directives can be a great tool to create different versions of your software depending on different switches that you can set and this brings us to the end of this tutorial I hope you liked this video and you found it useful, you learned something new and if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe because I'm making a lot of tutorials and I'll be coming back to you with more programming training. This is your best friend in programming, Code Ajit, signing off.